It's a profound honor for me to greet and welcome all of you this morning on behalf of the whole team of Center for Women Studies and Research, University of Kashmir, to the inaugural session of the workshop. Uh, what is most important about the inaugural session of any event is how the event is to be rationalized, how the event is to be situated in the shortest possible means. It's in this regard, uh, let's talk about a small excerpt in the form of a story mentioned in one of my favorite books, that is, How Democracies Die, uh, authored by Stephen Levitsky and co-authored by Daniel Zeblin. Uh, there are three characters involved in this uh, short story. It is uh, a horse and a stag and a hunter. The story goes like this. A quarrel had arisen between the horse and the stag. So the horse came to the hunter to ask his help to take revenge on the stag. The hunter agreed but said, if you desire to conquer the stag, you must permit me to place this piece of iron between your jaws so that I may guide you with these rings and allow this saddle to be placed upon your back so that I may keep steady upon you as we follow the enemy. The horse agreed to the conditions and the hunter soon saddled and bridled him. Then with the aid of the hunter, the horse soon overcame the stag. Accepting that it should be at the end of all the miseries, the horse said to the hunter, now get off me and remove those things from my mouth and back. Not so fast, my friend, said the hunter. I have now got your under bit and spur and prefer to keep you as you are at present. Though there is another side to this story, we need not to go into that side, at least not right now. But uh, here, the horse specifies the woman. The hunter specifies the patriarchy, and the stag is what we can be called as the problem with no name, something craftily mentioned by Betty Friedan in her masterpiece, uh, 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 Feminine Mystic. It's the hunter who has often exploited problem with no name, obviously, to control and hegemonize women since times immemorial. Women's health in its manifestation are no exception to such mainstream, rather mainstream, uh, control. Without further ado, may I request our worthy coordinator, Dr. Shazia Malik, to formally welcome the distinguished guest in her formal welcome address. It's both an honor and privilege to stand before you today and welcome you all to one day workshop on health and hygiene awareness for women organized by Center for Women's Studies and Research, University of Kashmir. We are highly honored by the presence of Honorable Vice Chancellor, University of Kashmir, Professor Nilofar Khan, for being the chief guest of this extremely important event. Honorable Ma'am, we humbly appreciate your finding time to be with us despite your busy schedule. However, your presence in this workshop emphasizes the seriousness of this event. Though Honorable Chief Guest merely requires any introduction, having served the university for more than two decades now, my dear learned delegates, I take immense pleasure in acknowledging her contributions towards the excellence of Center for Women's Studies as its founding director. Being first female DSW, first female Dean College Development Council, or first female registrar, and now first honorable vice chancellor are no doubt important credits to her. Nonetheless, it is important to highlight that by showing the courage to accept these responsibilities and performing these roles with utmost dedication, she has set a precedent for other female aspirants. I'm sincerely elated to welcome you, ma'am. I would like to extend a very warm welcome to our worthy registrar, University of Kashmir, Dr. Nisar Ahmed Mir, officiating this session as guest of honor. We are indebted to him for extending full support to the center from time to time. It's my privilege to welcome Professor Zwana Habib as the keynote speaker for the session. Professor Rizwana is a professor and head of unit in the Department of Obstetrics and Gynecology, GMC, LD Hospital, Srinagar. She has received award for Safe Motherhood Program. I thank you, ma'am, for being kind enough to be with us today. I deem it my honor to welcome Dean School of Applied Sciences and Technology 
and former head of pharmaceutical sciences, Professor Nahida Tabassum, for gracing the occasion with her presence and agreeing to share her valuable ideas. I would like to extend a hearty welcome to the Dean Student Welfare, University of Kashmir, Professor Anisa Shafi, who is also heading Department of Sociology, University of Kashmir, for taking time to be with us to make this event engaging. It's my pleasure to welcome our respected ally, Dean School of Arts, Language and Literature, and Head Department of Linguistics, Professor Adil Amin Kaak, who has been instrumental in shaping the content and literature structure of the pamphlet titled Socio-Cultural Perceptions on Menstruation. Ladies and gentlemen, a please leave of the pamphlet. While appreciating the department for this, the matter of the fact is that conventionally, when we talk of the health and hygiene of women, as has been uh, just now highlighted by our uh, keynote speaker, that this theme is still regarded as a matter of shame as, and is loaded with stigma, it's loaded with taboo, it is not being discussed openly, and if it is not being discussed openly, how much courage it requires to bring it on an open and public platform. Congratulations again to the Women's Studies Center. Well, to my understanding, as a student of social science, once we talk about the health and hygiene of women, this definitely has to be understood through two perceptions, or we can say there are two dimensions of the theme. One, of course, the medical dimension or the perspective, and the more important, what I feel as a student of social science, that is the socio-cultural perspective or the socio-cultural dimension. See, as a learning gathering together today, we are here to discuss about this issue, which is definitely a very sensitive issue. But while discussing as a learned gathering, often what happens that we are using our own prism, we are using our own lens, we are using our own yardstick to discuss and to examine and to analyze the issues and concerns of women as far as their health concerns, hygiene concerns are related. But the matter of the fact is, that we have to understand that women is not, they are not a homogeneous category. Women are heterogeneous. They are diverse. Their identity is diverse. So you have rich women, you have poor women, you have literate women, you have illiterate women, you have elite women. And you have a non-elite woman, you have a slum woman, so on and so forth. So what is assumed and what is being practiced by me as a category of a particular group of women, we cannot apply the same yardstick, we cannot apply the same uh, lens to understand the issues and concerns of other women. So here I would request that once we are talking about the health and hygiene of women or the actual theme under discussion, we need to get connected with the women at grassroots level. We have to understand the issues and concerns of women who are there in the slums, who are there in the tribes, who are there like the Gujar and Bakarwal women, the Fisher women, so on and so forth, who are not educated. See, as a woman belonging to a particular category, I do find the picture is all rosy, but what the statistics reveals, what are the findings of the research, the picture is altogether grim. Women are suffering on the front of health and hygiene because of the socio-cultural uh, perspectives, socio-cultural dimensions, you know. It's on the basis of our uh, work, which we conducted on the adolescent girls, on the theme under uh, reference. What was alarming to see, our work was on the adolescent girls who were there in the schools and colleges. And alarmingly, what we could understand and what we could gather as our findings, 
that subtle there is a disconnect between mother and daughter they cannot it's totally unacceptable for a mother to listen from a daughter speaking about the issues the health issues which otherwise are quite quite natural she is being socialized in a way her socialization has taken in, uh, in, uh, in, in uh, has been taken place in such a way that she has been taught that discussing about these kinds of things is a shame for you so when a daughter is dying down with this natural health condition she is in pain she has to arrange for so many things of her own of her own and then she has to arrange for the disposal of the things and she always has to play a hide and seek kind of a thing so this is if hide and seek kind of a thing is over there how do we expect that you can have health you can uh, have a positive health you can have a hygiene how can a girl how can a daughter get that kind of a nutrition when she is not able not to talk of father not to talk of brother when she is not in a position to talk about this to her mother and mother has trained her in such a way please this is a shame as has been referred by my worthy speaker over here during ramzan this is on the basis of the findings what which we have gathered from the field that during the month of fasting they have to pose like that everything is normal and she uh, rather than getting a better nutrition better diet she has to spend her whole day on water only and then she has to work tirelessly for all the domestic chores of her family so these are the something points of concern and here i would submit rather request that yes since we have to get connected our role is towards society our students especially women studies center jinka ki ye objective hai they will have to prepare their students as ambassadors so that they can go to their families their relatives their neighborhood their communities and sensitize people about this you know it is not only on the family uh, side see what is happening if a girl has to get some stuff from a shopkeeper oh my god she has to wait whether somebody is there standing or not standing how to get it how not to get it you are getting me from so the family and other things we have to take care of all these things and we have our awareness shall be in uh, incomplete without sensitizing the masses and for that our students not only the women study center all students who are already stand who stand sensitized about the issues let them come forward and let them act as the ambassadors i may not go with the gender bias over here boys as well as the girls can play this vital role to bring the desirable change in the society i am uh, truly happy today in many ways and uh, one good way i have seen that uh, adage goes or a proverb goes that behind every successful man there is a woman but i could see today that i have seen that a togetherness of department of sociology department of psychology department of women studies department of social work what i am always craving for but uh, i am seeing all of them today and i am happy that again behind this togetherness there is the women studies thank you thank you all when we comes to speaking my teacher our teacher professor anisa has already spoken about the sociology which i cannot dare to speak now much but uh, to be honest when we come to the health and hygiene of ruler of women in general what ma'am has already spoken i during my head is a research also i have worked on few projects of health and hygiene among the rural women again my research was on tribal so i have little bit worked on tribal women also then there is the urban women what ma'am has categorized literate literate or elite or poor or rich but uh, what i have seen that there is a marked variation about the health consciousness and the health and hygiene of 
different categories of women depending on their settlement is. Whether it is rural, whether it is urban, whether it is tribal, or whether it is sedentary or what we call the nomads. So there is a huge difference of only awareness then we come to the practice part. So we need as scholars or students of different faculties, different subjects, we need to work on it also. When we see that, particularly what I have seen myself and what I have faced ourselves, that uh, women by, by their biological issues, particularly I have found in my own home also, that I have seen the woman very anemic. Because when ma'am was talking about the mal, I, I may not talk about the malnutrition, but I may talk about the balanced nutrition diet to be given to the woman, so that they can maintain minimum the standards of their blood, uh, human blood, which is probably 13 or 14 points for them. So I have seen that their anemic, most of the women, most of the girls have been anemic because of their different issues of biological nature. So I hope that uh, as scholars, as students, as teachers, we will, uh, we, we will make certain strides in this field that we will come out with certain strategies uh, because this is in-house, because we are within the university talking about it, that when we come to the f go to the field, we see a different picture, we see a different scenario where actually we need to work and bring certain sociological or social changes among our society. Now, as we know that Almighty has made this universe he has created males and females and biologically created both of them differently. As Dr. Rizwanaji uh, said, adolescent age is very sensitive and health and hygiene are a uh, very important concern at this uh, stage. Like she mentioned about polycystic ovaries amongst uh, females, I would definitely like Women's Study Center to deliberate on this uh, health issue also. But today's theme is also uh, very impo important uh, because uh, the main, uh, you know, uh, portfolio or the main aim or the main uh, work of Women's Study Centers is also besides research and academics, uh, advocacy, extension and awareness. So uh, this awareness program is one of its kind I'm sure uh, this particular information you will address at the grassroots level also. Like uh, Dr. Rizwanaji said that through National Health Mission, we are already doing this type of exercise at uh, grassroots level. But uh, somebody mentioned about Gujar Bakarwal uh, population. So uh, definitely we have to be connected and uh, connected in a very uh, good way or connected in a very fruitful way so that uh, it makes difference. I'm sure that many such sensitive topics will be uh, you know, taken by you for deliberations in uh, future also. Uh, and uh, Women's Studies Center is very close to my heart. As they said, uh, you know, I have been the founder director and I have fought for this center at national and state level a lot and I must say even in my own institution. For its existence and for its development, I have fought for it even in my own institution. So, uh, you know, now being at uh, the helm of affairs, uh, I will try my best how it moves forward and it moves forward in good direction but I want inputs from the people who are working there from the faculty, from the research scholars and even from the students uh, towards the, uh, you know, uh, by having good input in research, in academics, in awareness programs, in advocacy programs, uh, you know, in various activities. I know that it is not a big program of any uh, scientific uh, importance. It's a small program, but is more important than any big conference 
at national level because uh, we are addressing to a very uh, basic issue which we do not talk about uh, even in our homes our parents are, do not talk about it now maybe there is different a difference because we have literate mothers now and uh, you know uh, we mostly have friendly relationship between a daughter and mother now now maybe we are addressing it but think about at the grassroots level uh, amongst the population of Gujabra Kavals amongst the uh, below poverty line people where this issue must not be addressed I am sure our uh, women's study center will have uh, such outreach programs and reach there. We have very vibrant team. Professor uh, Tabasumji has contributed a lot as director. We have Dr. Shazan now and with her Dr. Roshan Ara and other faculty members, I'm sure uh, they will move forward and work towards the right direction. Anything from the administration will definitely do it but uh, we want this center to have more visibility not only at the institutional and state level but even at the uh, national level and i once again say that this is the only center which survived which survived amongst four centers four centers were established in jnk this is the only center which survived now uh, you know there are very less difficulties there and we'll jointly we'll try to uh, resolve them and uh, it's a good gesture and it's a good uh, you know uh, good type of work that you have collaborated with uh, department of Ling linguistics you can collaborate with social work with sociology any department you can collaborate uh, you can collaborate with home science you can have joint programs with our health center any department you can collaborate and i'm sure by these collaborations we'll have a very productive uh, recommendations which we can put forward. From the point of view of health and uh, the, I can say the hygiene, this is really the, I should, I think this is the talk of the day, the, uh, all the uh, young females, they should know about this topic. The title which they have chosen, that is the health, hygiene and awareness of, among women. Now there are actually different words in this, health, hygiene and then awareness. Now, health, as you know, health actually is the defined as a state of, we can say, the complete physical, mental and social well-being. And not only the diseases which are associated. After listening to the, my expert, I think there is very few things left. She has already covered, Dr. Rizwana has covered most of the things which I would have liked to discuss. But I will talk about something a bit different. So, health, we say when we are uh, uh, fit physically, mentally, and then we say for good health, there's an old saying, all of you must be knowing, a sound mind is a sound, uh, sound body. Then when we talk about hygiene, hygiene we say as is a Greek word coming from uh, the goddess and it refers to conditions and you can say that um, uh, these uh, uh, the rules which follow uh, to maintain this health and prevent the spread of diseases. So these two words, they have to go hand in hand, they are interrelated to each other. So if health is there, there will be hygiene also and if hygiene is there, good health will be maintained. So we can say hygiene refers to the conditions and practices that help to maintain health and prevent the spread of diseases. And medical hygiene includes specific set of practices associated with this uh, preservation of health. Then when we talk about the disease, since I belong to the medical background a bit, so my, automatically these terms came in my mind. So what we should do also, what is this disease that we say it is a departure from normal health through structural or functional disorders of the body. And good health involves proper functioning of all body organs and enables us to do well at work and life. So whenever you have good health, you will have good hygiene. Then, uh, as uh, Dr. Zwana already said, globally there are approximately 52% of the females population and out of it, out of 26% of the total population who are in reproductive age presently. And out of these women and girls, they will menstruate each month for about 2 to 7 days. And uh, as you all know, it remains a taboo in most parts of the world and is rarely talked about. So question arises why this, uh, this uh, is important, why menstrual hygiene awareness is important. Now uh, it's said that, that we all know poor menstrual hygiene can pose serious health risks like 
reproductive urinary tract infections which in turn can result in as madam said in future infertility and then birth complications that this is the basic which all of the young uh, students here they should uh, keep in mind this is not uh, we are only talking about this in papers and books we should maintain proper hygiene actually it has a serious complications in the afterwards life when they go uh, after their marriage it can pose a very great threat even for the birth of the child also so one has to be very careful in the initial stages of the life to keep taking care of the uh, you can say the cleanliness and hygiene one has to maintain so neglecting to wash hands after changing menstrual products can spread infections like hepatitis and uh, hepatitis b especially and thrush now uh, madam has already talked about the uh, menstrual hygiene day i will not talk about that now uh, uh, talking about this menstruation it remains a taboo in most parts of the world and it's really as i said talked about currently cultural practices and taboos around menstruation it has a negative impact on the lives of women and girls and it reinforces gender inequity and exclusion criteria you can see now unicef in uh, and world health code 2014 they described it as menstrual hygiene management has been defined as women and adults and girls using a clean menstrual management material to absorb or collect blood that can be changed in privacy as often as necessary for the duration of the menstruation period using soap and water for washing the body as required and having facilities to dispose of used menstrual management materials now this last line is very important because if there is not proper disposal of these uh, materials ultimately it will pollute the atmosphere and we can be in more trouble than uh, talking about the awareness about the, this hygiene and health when it comes to promoting menstrual health and hygiene there is strength in numbers and that is why i am so glad that today we are having this uh, workshop here because the more the number uh, more uh, people are participating more the spread of awareness each one of you today should go and spread awareness among your own lot periods are part of life and education is the best route for eliminating stigma w what is woman she is the essence of life she gives life and uh, deserves respect honor and access to safe and healthy atmosphere she should be healthy and then our society will be healthy as plato said beginning is the most important part of her and i am sure we have started and we hope to succeed in our endeavor it is so unfortunate that in many parts of the world even in developed countries menstruation is still st stigmatized and you will be surprised to know that usa considered one of the most developed countries in the world is included in the list now let's discuss what is menstruation maybe <laughs> i may be brazen and uh, these are the words we are always using and maybe you are not used to it but uh, in the 21st century we have to be aware what is menstruation what is female health and then only we can help females it is a, what is menstruation it's a purely physiological process like uh, breathing like digestion nothing else it's a normal process it's a day to day process for females at least every month they have to face it the physiology of menstruation starts at puberty when a girl starts having changes in the body like growth of secondary sexual characteristics and menarche menarche is the first menstrual period it signifies a normal healthy female and is an important symbol of entering womanhood for the girl child it should be celebrated rather than uh, having any stigma about it menarche Minarchy can start any time from 8 to 13 years old, and uh, see how uh, immature and small the child is that time. For the girl, it may be intimidating, confusing, and overwhelming. It is more so because minarchy and puberty are rarely discussed with the child, especially in our society. Society often treats periods and women's health in general as if it is a stigma and should not be talked about openly. we see this daily in our lives we see it in our families in our society even women rarely discuss and educate their daughters about it so because of these taboos and stigma girls feel embarrassed and ashamed about their periods it may lead girls to avoid doing certain activities especially the physical ones and sometimes they even miss out on going to the school and lose out on education in some cultures women are not even allowed to cook 
catch any plant, bathe during periods. In other cultures, women are isolated and asked to stay in menstrual huts. It is so uh, difficult for them, like in African cultures. Even in our society, menstruation is a hush-hush affair, wherein a girl is asked not to discuss it, especially in front of males or the family. I'm uh, sure that most of the girls who are sitting here are asked, even uh, in the, uh, this month of Ramadan, to fast so that the male, their father and their brothers don't know they are having periods. Stigma about menstruation hurts human rights, demeans, degrades and has effect on health of women and it amounts to abuse, both mental and physical. Lack of information about menstruation leads to damaging misconceptions and discrimination. It can also lead to poor menstrual hygiene, which has a long-lasting effect. Infections of the reproductive tract, of the urinary tract, and sometimes pelvic inflammatory disease, and they can lead to infertility in the future. So if we uh, don't make them aware about the hygiene, they can have problems later on in the life. Menstrual cycle is a monthly affair. Every month, woman has periods for three to five days. Normally, 30 to 80 ml of blood is lost every month. See, if anybody has a cup, how much uh, we, uh, how we make a lot of it if anybody has a small cut. But a woman loses 30 to 80 ml of blood every month and we are supposed to just be quiet about it. So, uh, it's not fair. If the flow, now, uh, a woman has to know what is normal and what is abnormal. If we don't educate them about it, they won't know what is abnormal. Like uh, uh, normal cycles are uh, every 24, 28 or uh, 30 days. Some cycles are very short, they, are, they can also be normal. But sometimes what happens is that a woman can have lengthy cycle, lose a lot of blood. And that results in anemia. We call that uh, in medical terms menorrhagia. Then women may have shorter and uh, lengthy, uh, shorter cycles, but with heavy flow, we call that polymenorrhagia. And if woman is not aware about these things, how can she go to a doctor? How can she tell anybody? So she has to be made aware about what is normal and what is abnormal. I have seen that today, uh, these days, we are facing a lot of problem with polycystic ovarian syndrome. And one of the symptoms of polycystic, uh, it is very rampant in our young girls. And one of the symptoms of polycystic ovarian syndrome is irregular cycle. They don't menstruate every month. They menstruate every three to four months. It has a long-lasting effect. It can cause infertility. It can cause uh, obesity. It can cause diabetes in the future. So they have to be made aware what is normal and what is uh, abnormal. A woman needs compassion, care, and information about menstruation. More than one-fourth of the world population, that is 26% of global population, is in the reproductive age group and menstruating. See, it is one-fourth of the world population is menstruating and we are hushing it up. Yet such an important and natural physiological process is stigmatized. Hence, menstruation awareness is important. Now many organizations and governments are working on this. Menstrual Hygiene Day is celebrated worldwide on 28th of May every year. This year, the theme for menstrual hygiene is making menstruation a normal fact of life by 2030. The aim is to have access to proper menstrual knowledge and hygiene, raise, uh, raise awareness about challenges regarding access to menstrual products and sanitation facilities. UNICEF has also started an initiative where every girl can learn, play, and safeguard her own health without experiencing any stress or taboo. UNICEF has started a Red Dot Challenge, a social media campaign in partnership with some NGOs which aims to spread message about menstrual hygiene. They rope in celebrities to spread awareness. Seeing that celebrities do have an impact on general public, it is a very good initiative. Ministry of Health and Family Welfare has also introduced a scheme for promotion of menstrual hygiene in the age group of 10 to 19 years to increase access to use of high quality sanitary napkins and their disposal in environmental friendly manner, which, which is also very important. We just can't throw all the stuff out. Shuchi scheme started in 2013 and 14 is aimed at instilling awareness about menstrual hygiene. National Health Mission has also started a scheme for adolescent girls for menstruation awareness and increase access to high quality sanitary napkins and ensure safe disposal. Initially, it was started in rural areas of 17 states and now has been spread to all other states. Gom Indian government has taken initiative to raise awareness and incorporate 
friendly wash facilities which is very important to maintain hygiene a girl should a woman should have uh, wash facilities and only then she can be hygienic accurate pragmatic and age appropriate information about menstruation what is normal for uh, puberty what is normal for adolescence and what is normal in reproductive age group and what is normal in perimenopausal age group that uh, woman should be made aware so that she doesn't have any misconceptions social support which is very important we need social support for such initiative resources and effective disposal of sanitary napkins girls are also given information about use, usage of menstrual cups or tampons how to use and sanitize them these cups or tampons are either rubber and need to be properly used and sanitized otherwise can cause life threatening infection menstrual health and hygiene includes assuring a menstruating woman has everything in place to manage period safely and with dignity ensure women have access to not only information water toilets safe space for uh, washing and changing but also means of disposal and positive social norms this will end period poverty and we also need to bust myths about menstruation this period poverty has been seen even in the most developed countries even they don't have access to sanitary napkins and uh, safe disposal of them creating awareness and openness about menstruation and imparting knowledge about it through media media whether it's print whether it's visual and by organizing such workshops will remove the mystery and stigma surrounding the most basic and important physiological process and help in improving the mental and physical health of girls and women meeting hygiene needs of all adolescent girls is a fundamental issue of human rights and public health such events raise self esteem and dignity of women and help in safeguarding their health by imparting knowledge about hygiene we need to impart menstruation awareness not only among women but also among males of our society and remove the stigma and superstitions teaching males about menstruation promotes communication lessens stigma and creates empathy for the girls or women and helps in better management of problems if there are any it is indeed my proud pleasure and honor to propose vote of thanks on behalf of the center for women studies and research on the occasion of this great workshop at the very outset i would like to extend my sincerest gratitude to our chief guest of today honorable vice chancellor university of kashmir professor nilofar khan dear madam our heart is overwhelmed to see you here today not our founder director only but as our honorable chief guest and honorable vice chancellor of the university this is really the credit goes to the whole women folk of kashmir in near future you have set the targets because we need to talk more and more on the health issues of women and in near future we hope you will collaborate with us and you will cooperate with us again thank you so much i would like to extend my sincere thanks to our worthy registrar dr nisar ahmed mir for always being cooperative kind and considerate whenever uh, there is any support required to the for the center for women studies and research